so in addition to learning about disasters, we're also going to be working on our, our quantitative skills this semester, right? And so the next thing I want to talk about is um, how can, so a lot of times um, disasters, the information that are coming from disasters aren't necessarily folks that are, um, I mean sometimes they are, but they aren't necessarily super, um, you know, Joe Blow technical kind of thing, right? That they just know everything and everything is automatically tweeted in a form you can copy and paste and all that kind of stuff. So um, we really use uh, very, very commonly the portable document format or the PDF format for a lot of the information. That's definitely true in breaking events as, as like there's a map, like where, where do we have to evacuate? You know, a lot of times the, the default format for those um, uh, pieces of information are in a PDF. Um, but also, even when that's not around, a lot of times the um, organizations, nonprofits, government agencies, when they release, say, summary statistics or things of that nature, they will also put that in PDF, right? They're trying to make it as generically readable as possible. Most of the folks who do disasters are old people like me, and so they're not really used to, to new, new tech and all that kind of jazz. And so, so PDF is great when you don't know if someone's going to be reading this in a newspaper or on a smartphone or printed up on a, on a um, disaster center, right? So, that, so that, that obviously has, there's also value in that. But um, what that means is sometimes when, when you and I are trying to go get data to understand disasters, and this, this is not just a disaster, this is a common challenge, right, with a lot of, uh, a lot of topics. But, but it's hard to get that data in a usable form. So we're going to talk about that to, as our starter exercise today. And so, um, and so we're going to, uh, I want you guys to make a couple graphs to get us going, right, to exercise some of those muscles. Um, and uh, obviously, why create a graph in the first place? Because we're trying to look, at for, look for a relationship between say the, if it's a two-dimensional graph, the x-axis and the y-axis. And remember the, the y-axis, we sometimes call that x-axis, y-axis, sometimes we call it the x-axis and the f of x, meaning the function of x. So we're, when we do a two-dimensional graph, we're assuming there's a, we're, we're exploring as to whether there's a relationship between the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. Cool? Everybody with me so far? Okay, so for example, um, here's some, here's some uh, examples of um, people that uh, uh, perhaps passed away um, in, uh, in disasters. And these, these types of things are helpful, right? We can say, hey, is there, is there a particular year or a particular uh, era where deaths were, were more dramatic or more numerous? Um, or is stuff mostly pretty low and then there's sort of weird outlier years, right? So that, that's an important first step to understand, hey, if there are outlier years, let's look at those outlier years and see what was going on then. Was it a weather thing? Was it a policy thing? Was it a technology thing? You know, what was going on? So, so here's an example where we have uh, a time on the x-axis, which is the, the classic x-axis, and then some measure of response. In this case, how many folks uh, passed away. Um, and so, so this would be an example of a simple um, scatter plot. Right? Um, typically, when we do time-related stuff and we have data, and, and so, so technically there's nothing wrong with this. This is, this is all you know, real data, and, and that's a button you could push and make, make you know, the graphing program do that, so that's not technically wrong. But better when we're looking at time series, and so, so if we didn't have every single year, if we just had some, some random smatterings of years, that's a good approach. Right? But where we have more continuous data, either every year, every other month, every, every five years, whatever, and it's, a, it's a, um, a fair sampling throughout time, an even sampling throughout time. Usually what we'll do is we'll do that as a, um, as a line graph, right? So we're, because we're, because the line is implying that the stuff that's happening to the left has something to do with the stuff on the right. So in other words, in other words the, year, the, the year to the left preceded our event, the year to the right followed that. And so the, the line is, is, makes sense. Is that, you guys with me? Okay, so those are a couple simple graphs, right? So let's see if we can do that. Um, uh, so when you throw stuff into um, a graphing program, um, a lot of times the default options that come up aren't, aren't ideal, right? So I think when we glance these three, gra three graphs, A, B, C, um, 
there's some good parts and bad parts about some of these graphs, yeah? So what, what, yeah, you guys tell me, what, just for, between these three options, which one, which one do you like best? Which do you think is, is an effective communicator of the number of folks that passed away over time? So A, B, C. And tell me, and tell me, so does anybody pick C? Okay, tell me why. Ah, okay, okay. So, so the argument is that hey, uh, uh, right here, it's that um, uh, the 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 uh, particular plot you can drop right down, know exactly what year it is. Okay. What else? What else is good or bad? Or what else do you guys like or dislike about this uh, graph? Chris. I dislike the way you Yeah, so it's it. So this is um, uh, again a lot of these things aren't technically wrong. It, it's it's yes, that is the year or whatever. But so the first step is going to be make sure we can all do graphs and 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 get some of this you know visualize this quantitative information. And then once we've gotten that step, and yeah, okay, now how to make the program work? And everything, then the next step is let's make it elegant. Like let's make it effective. Let's make it a um, a. Uh, a clear communication of whatever the thing we're trying to communicate is, okay? So, so I, I like the idea that, hey, it, it's really clear as to what year is what, right? And, and that's kind of helpful because the implication when we see this kind of stuff is something like this x-axis. So this x-axis is saying, here's a year, and then there's a, period, there's a, a, a space, and then another, um, you know, year and then a space and another year and it's even right and it's even and so that's in our brain that's what we expect we expect so in this case it looks like between each of the tick marks or each of the grid marks is 20 years we expect it to go uh, you know 1920 and then 40 and then 60 etc right that's what we're expecting this guy um, uh, essentially uh, the data has been coded incorrectly Okay, and this can also happen when we get our data from PDFs, and the data gets, or the, the formatting of the data gets coded as text, right? Not as numbers, but as text. And so that's what happened here. And so when the student graphed this, um, you know, the implica when we first glanced at it, it looks like, okay, yeah, yeah, 2001, 2002, oh, then there's 2004, and then 2003, and then 2005, and there's 2006, and there's another 2006, Right, so we're starting to see some errors here. Um, but even, it, so, so that, that's one error, that's a, that's a real issue, right? And so again, what's happened is, is the program just said, first number in the column, plot it. Second number in the column, plot it. Third, right? So it, it, it's kind of like chat GPT, right? It, it doesn't, it's, it's stupid. It doesn't understand that, that the quantity of, say, 2004 is larger than the quantity for 2003, right? And again, that's because the data have been coded as letters, not as numbers. Okay, and then the other, the other big one with just sticking on this axis, the other big one is that um, it's not even. So, so there's that, that ordering issue where sometimes the years are a little bit out of order, cool. And then, like most of these, it's 1981, 1982. So one year, between, and then 1982, 1992. Then that, that's a 10 year gap, right? And if we go far over the left, 1965 to 1960, that's a 65 year gap, right? So, so there are, are, are problems, right? And so, yes, technically it's been labeled, so technically I put it out there, but, but that's not what most people are, are expecting, and you're gonna mislead people. And so, um, so that issue of text being numbers is a problem. Um, and then the other one that Chris was mentioning was that like, there's a lot of zeros. So it's zero, and then this looks like two million, um, and this is not death, this is damage, but two million, a four million, six million, right? Which is, maybe that's okay, but there's a little, with a little bit of tweaking, we can make this a lot easier to interpret, right? I, is that two million or 200,000? I have to count, how many, one, two, three, four, right? So let's, all of that, you're making your audience do silly work, right? Silly work, they don't have to do. We're not, we haven't opened up a, a French textbook from 1750, right? But this is something that we just created for ourselves to convince, uh, to understand a trend, to 
yeah. inform a manager, to talk to people that have just been evacuated, whatever. Let's not have them do silly work, right? And so, so formatting is important. It's not just a superficial thing. It, it adds to clarity and adds to um, more honest looking at the data as opposed to getting stuck in the formatting and getting distracted by the, the formatting. Okay, so that's, so that's um, an example. And then also, um, uh, so we, we always will label our axes. Um, the one, one time you can, it's okay to not label the variable would be if it's something like this and it's the year. And I mean, this year is kind of messed up, but, but it's pretty obvious this is year, right? 1986, 19, so it's not wrong to put the year there, but, but the x-axis here, it would be okay if you left the year off. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. But as a default, you wanna put your, your, what the variable is, and then usually in parentheses, the units. And so on this y-axis here, um, it's in uh, thousands, it looks like they're trying to write thousands of US dollars, right? So in fact, if that's true, this is not two million, right? This is two billion and four billion, right? So, so again, all that is, is technically nobody lied, the, the stuff's there, but it, right, it, it, you, it, people easily get misled and they, they take a while to get it in. Okay, so that, that's one example. How about this one? Do you guys like this one, not like this one? Or, or what do you like, what do you dislike about this guy? Yeah, Angelina. Okay, right, yeah, so, so great. So here they use, the, so the unit here is millions, and then they're just using a, a simple number, a zero, a one, a two, a three. Okay, cool. Anything else you guys like, dislike? Um, I like that it's like cleaner than the mm -hmm. previous graph, but it feels like it doesn't have enough information. Like there's like gaps of 20 years and yeah. Right, so the question is, so, so it, might, it might look like there's no data here. I think there actually is data every single year. It's just, it's just the scale is such that it, it's hard for you to distinguish between the zero and, and a little small number. But yeah, but good, good point. Other thing, yeah. I think it's a bit harder to pinpoint down an exact year. Correct. Of when like that big spike in death might have happened. Exactly, yep. It's like a bit past 1950, but. Totally. Or no. Uh, 19, yeah, so it looks like 1930, and then maybe it's like 1933 or something, but we're kind of, you know, best guessing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, cool. Any other, any other thoughts on this bad boy? Okay, how about this last one? Lastly, this one. What do you guys think about this one? Even though this would be better as a line graph, but still, but what do you guys think about it? Uh, no, I think I think I think zero. I think, I think z the the lowest ones are right, literally on the zero uh, zero line. So yeah, I don't I don't believe any are negative. I think it's just the, the graphing element is is or the pixelation of the graphing element might look a little bit pokey downy. Uh, Yeah, it, it, yeah, right. It, so it's helpful. Those things you guys said before, yeah, so, so okay, I've got this, but is that, is that 1981 or 82, right? It's a little bit, a little bit unclear, but, but in general, yeah, so it's easy. This stuff pops out, right? Now, when I, when I skim this, I can see that the numbers really do seem to be in order, right? And there doesn't appear to be like a 65-year or whatever the heck, you know, gap between some points and then one year between the next or whatever. Okay. Okay, cool. So you guys are starting to get the idea, right? I'd say with all of these, when you have something, especially where stuff is, is like these outliers, grid lines are really helpful. So grid lines are those, those faint um, uh, 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 X and Y lines in the background that just help us eyeball it. So even though this isn't labeled, even though whatever this one in 1980-something isn't labeled, right, I still know it's about 300,000. Whereas if I didn't have that, that line, it would be like, is that like 290 or 310 or you know, what is that? And so, so they, they very much help us with a quick um, a scanning of, the, of the, the information. Cool. 
Okay. So um, now let's start to do this. So uh, what I would like, what we're going to do next, you don't have to do anything quite yet. I'm going to explain something first. But what, what, what I'd like you guys to do is to generate two graphs. And the graphs are for California. Want to look at, and, and so, so we're not trying to do a, an analysis right now of, um, of all wildfires or all that kind of stuff. But let's just talk about um, uh, the most deadly wildfires in California history and um, the largest uh, wildfires in California history. So, so um, somebody make a guess. What, 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 where do you guys think the most deadly, or, or do you think stuff back in the day was, and I'll, I'll just say that we're going to use data from um, what we now call CAL FIRE. Um, it used to be called California Department of Forestry and Fire, and even though they do a lot of forestry, um, all the money comes from fire these days, so they, their, their name is now CAL FIRE officially, even though they do a lot of forestry stuff still. Um, they didn't start keeping formal records, and they're the entity, I mean, there's some academics that have tried to go back farther, um, but um, they are the, our official state repository of fire statistics, uh, CAL FIRE is. They didn't start this until 1931, so the first real counts start in 1932. So these, so these graphs we'll make will just go from now uh, back to 1932, so they, they, won't, they won't quite go a century, but the, you know, it's